Hello, my name is Giuliano. I am the user space life patch developer. And I am here to present about the current status in user space life patching and what can be expected from the future of the technology. And well, let's begin with the presentation. So uh, here's our agenda. Uh, first, I will speak about what is user space life patching for those who, who don't know it. Uh, then how we ship uh, user space life patching on SOS Linux Enterprise. Uh, then I explain how it works, how we can create life patches, and what is the future of the technology. So there was a presentation on SOSECON 2022. Uh, with regard to user space life patching, you can watch it on YouTube. And uh, it has a demo of, uh, of it working, if anyone is interested. Okay, so let's begin. So what is user space life patching? So user space life patching is a mechanism to redirect functions of a running process in execution time. This means that processes that uses ULP technology has its updates Oh, let's has uh, user space uh, life patching updates uh, applied without any need to restart the process. So uh, examples where this is interesting are in, in memory databases, long running simulations, and mission critical infrastructure, or pretty much anywhere uh, where Restarting the application will result in a very long code, uh, code boot uh, time, so you are not. Uh, so it's not very, very interesting to restart the the system. So currently, we have the following criteria to create and ship a live patch. First is that the issue must be live patchable. I will, I will present uh, some cases where. It can, uh, the issue cannot be life patchable. And the CVS score must be greater or equal seven. <clears throat> okay, so now I'll say, uh, speak about how we deploy uh, user space life patches into SUSE Linux Enterprise. And the life patches are shipped through RPM packages. And we push them into SLE through Zyper. The requirement is that you install every package that uh, ends with dash life patches and the package uh, called lip upload default. Uh, this thing is, is, is designed such as every life patch is pushed through the uh, life patches package. So for example, the glibc life patches are, uh, the glibc life patches are are shipped into the glibc live patches package. The OpenSSL are, is, is shipped into OpenSSL live patches package. And it's shipped as any normal update. And the patches are applied into post time. So once the, the package is, is installed in your system, the live patches take place. <coughs> and the lip upload default uh, package actually enables the user space life patching into all process. And if you need to, but if you need to disable uh, life patches into certain processes, you can use environmental variable, variables. There are the three environmental variables that we currently support. We can disable it on users, or on groups, or in path where the application is. So in this example, we are disable it in uh, any users that has the UID equals a thousand, or its name is Hoot. Uh, any, any users that uh, is member of the sudoers group, or every application that is placed on home or in the TMP folder. So he, it's uh, here's an example of an update that's shipped through a live patches. So this is a uh, live patch to OpenSSL. 
Here you can see that the OpenSSL, once the, the, the package is, is installed, we have the ULP tool trying to install the live patches into the system. And it's saying that here uh, it, it couldn't, the, the live patch wasn't su uh, suitable for the sleep process because the target library, in this case OpenSSL, wasn't loaded in the process. And it, it shows that it's su successfully installed into op ULP test and the PIP uh, processes. Uh, and it's showing which, uh, which the live patch it got installed. Uh, status of the live patches can be can be retrieved by calling ULP patches. So in this example here, we have two processes that I selected from a list of processes. The first one is the ULP test process, which has its status that uh, enabled, which means that live patching is enabled and working. And it has one live patch installed on libcrypto, which is the CVA 2022. And you can also see that this live patch is supposed to fix this CVA, this CVA here. Um, the second example is a case where the live patch, the, the, the live patching was disabled in the, the process because uh, in this case it was a, per, a page permission error. Uh, so pulse audio is loaded by systemd and it uh, ensures a memory protection mechanism that we are trying to support at the moment. So Pulse Audio, unfortunately, is not live patchable at the moment. So it, it, it shows this error message. And if you try to install any live patches into Pulse Audio, the, 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 the patch will just error out. But the system will keep working. Audio will keep working. Not, uh, everything works correctly. OK, so now I will speak about how ULP works. And the libraries that we ship with live patching support are compiled with this flag here. And what this flag do is better explain it by showing the contrast between just compiling with O2 and with this flag. So if you compile this function with O2, you will see that it basically zeroes out EAX and returns. But if you compile with the patchable functions entry, it generates a list of nops. And what these nops do is basically creates uh, uh, some area that we, on when we, we install the live patch, we insert a jump instruction to redirect the execution flow from the old function to a new function that solves some bug. So here in this example, we before the live patch, we have this, this sequence of knobs. But after the live patch, the two knobs after the, the, the function label is replaced by an indirect jump. And the, the, the knobs before the function label are directed with another jump instruction. But in this case here, the GDB is reading these, uh, the, the address of the new function as, as, as instructions. But it works in practice. It's just uh, GDB. And you might ask or question uh, if this, uh, have, uh, having those extra knobs instructions uh, impacts somehow in performance. And well, it has some impact, but it's very low. So we did a benchmark using the spec integer 2017 uh, benchmark. And we found that on average, it had an impact of 1.2% uh, of the execution time, with the worst case scenario being uh, almost 4%. So there exists some, 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 some uh, negative impact, but it's very little. Okay, so, and the user space life patching mechanism is divided into two models. First is the ULP binary, 
which provides a command line interface for creating, installing, uh, reverting, and inspecting live patches. Uh, you can look at the main page for more, more features and documentation. And the libpub library, which is loaded into the application and controls all patching mechanism within the process. Its functions are called from dual P through, through a ptrace uh, interface that we have. Okay, so dual P works by redirecting functions. Uh, this means that uh, the, it has some consequences. First, the live patch must include if you want to live patch uh, something, you have to include the entire code of the new function, not just the small piece of code that was changed. Second, if that you, we want to patch every, uh, if, if you want to, sorry, so, just a second. Okay, so uh, if you want to patch a function that was inlined into multiple functions, we also have to patch those other functions as well because it has a copy of the function we, that is bugged. And if the old function that we want to patch is on the call stack, uh, what happens is that the new function will only be run after this old function returns. So what happens is, for example, if we have this, in this example here, we have a function named event loop that loops forever. If you assume that it has a bug, and since this function never returns, if you try to patch, live patch this function, uh, the prolog never runs again, so it never gets redirected to the new function. So it, this is a case where you cannot live patch so if this, this function has a bug, you cannot live patch it. Okay, so creating user space live patches. Okay, so the LP works by redirecting functions. So if you want to fix, uh, so if you want to fix a bug, and you have a, 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 a normal patch for it, we can convert it into a live patch by um, basically executing the following steps. First, we extract the modified functions from the code base, and we create a shared object with those functions. Then we create a live patch description. I will show what it, what it is and some examples of it. And we embed it, embed it into the shared object file that contains those new functions. And then we build a live patch for each version of the library that we want, we desire the patch. So if we have multiple versions of OpenSSL, we have to create a single patch for each one of them. So in this example here, let's say we want to patch the SHA-1 function from OpenSSL. Here on the top right corner, I create a C file which contains the new version of the SHA-1 function. It's just do some dummy code uh, saying that the SHA-1 was disabled. Then we create the live patch description file, which is uh, here on the right side, uh, saying where is the, the uh, shared object with the new, new function, uh, where, where is the target uh, library, for example, it's the Lib crypto from OpenSSL. Uh, the location or name of the new function, and uh, the location or name of the old function. And then we compile everything into a shared object file, and we pack the description file into the shared object file, running the, the command line that is there. So, it's basically calling ULP Packer after uh, creating the shared object file. Okay, so, but that, that was a toy example. How about a real life scenario? So, extracting modified, modified functions uh, may have some really large dependency that we must track down. And uh, live patch must be built against 
uh, each library version. So I will first uh, discuss about the, the, this topic here, the, the extract in code. So here's an example of the CVE that we had to fix, which is this uh, 2013-0286. And the relevance part of the patch is on the right side of the slide. So basically, it changes uh, an struct and a, a function. Uh, this basically means that we have to modify the live patch a single function, which is general name simp. And we need to extract this function into a shared object file. First thing we do is to check if this function is inlined into other functions. So we build the library with dumping some uh, decisions that GCC made for optimizations, and one of them is the IPA clones, which tracks, among other things, uh, inlining. And if we look at this file, um, there is one, uh, a single line, a single instance of general name CMP there. Uh, but that's because it actually means that there is another function that got inlined into general name CMP and not the uh, not the inverse. So this means that general name CMP is not inlined anywhere, which means for, for us is good news. So the problem is as simple as extracting this function from OpenSSL. Okay, so Okay, so we need to, uh, to extract the, the, the function. We need to compute uh, every function, every symbol that uh, this function needs. Uh, okay, so let's, so this is an example of, uh, this is a small example where we try to compute the closure of the function interface, just to illustrate what, what actually this means. So here we have some uh, unused functions, such, such as this sum unused function. We have an inclusion of a header file, which has stuff that we probably don't need. So after we compute the closure, uh, first thing you may not notice is that the inclusion of the header is gone. We only have the, the symbols that we actually use. In this case, is the new pointer and the printf declaration. And the sum unused function is also gone. So yeah, that's basically the, 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 the closure thing. And we have, a, we have an internal tool for doing that which is named, we, we, we named Clang Extract. And what it actually do, it basically works uh, in, in practice by, we take the, the flags that GCC used, we pass some, well, the name of the function we want to extract and the output file, and it generates uh, the closure of the, 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 the symbol we want to extract into a nice C file. And further changes may be necessary uh, depending on what the patch needs. So for example, if we need to actually read a, a global variable that is uh, in the original library instead of redeclaring it, uh, so you may need to change the code accordingly. And so far, uh, this tool only gener uh, supports C. So C++ is, also, is planned, but uh, we don't support it for now. So what happens when we run this into the OpenSSL code base? Well, uh, for extracting the general name CMP function, it uh, included everything we need for the function to compile uh, by itself. So every typedef is there, every struct is there, uh, every symbol 
uh, every macro, every symbol definition, everything is there. Uh, this may scare a little at the first, but it is a, sim uh, a, a, sim a simply C file that contains everything for the function to be compiled uh, alone. Okay, so now I will speak about uh, building a, a live patch for each library version. Um, but we don't have anything uh, fancy for doing that. What we actually do is we create an intermediary uh, description file with uh, uh, a token, in this case it's libcrypto with all caps. And then we use sed to replace it, uh, this, this token with uh, the path where the, the library, the version of the library is. So in this example here, we have one for the path where is uh, libcrypto 5.14 is, another for the 7.10 and so on. And this generated one description file for each version. Um, the, so basically, if you, we have the, uh, a single description file uh, for uh, for each version, it means we have a single uh, live patch for each version of the library. So we have a, a, a version for the 5.14, a version for 7.10, and when we install, when we try to it, it, so we don't need to worry about uh, uh, the ULP tool trying to install the wrong patch because it actually configures out if this, the, the version of the library is correct or not. So in this example here, we have some other uh, uh, libcrypto that was that succeeded, which isn't uh, 5.14 and 7.10 because this is Tumbleweed. And the versions that, uh, uh, well, it shows that those versions got skipped because, well, it's not the uh, libcrypto version it's, uh, the system is running. Okay, so now I will speak a little about the future of user space live patching. And user space live patching has many things that we need to improve. One of them is porting it to other architectures, so 32-bit uh, Intel, uh, ARM, Power, S390. Uh, you al we also need to improve the automatic live patch creation. Uh, well, let's set our expectations. I don't think we can create uh, live patches 100% automatically. Uh, I do think uh, it's, it may be necessary to have so, uh, human intervention somewhere. And basically, but, but the, 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 what, we need, uh, what I need to do on, the, on this tool is uh, fix the dumps of the, uh, fix the Clunk's IST dump because uh, the code generated by Clunk Extract actually is by dumping the IST. The, the Clang IST. Uh, add support to C++ projects because uh, that way we, we certainly can, can improve on C++ support. Uh, find a way to, f to automatically detect symbol clashing and rename the symbols so that we don't um, so that we don't have any problems when installing, a, 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 when, when actually doing the, 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 the DL open on the live patch. Uh, then automatically use the GCC IPA clones on the analysis instead of looking the files uh, manually. And actually uh, find a way to look to many, the, uh, many files of the project automatically. So what a plan to do is that it can look to, into all files of the project by uh, simulating a compilation. So the, the, the tool just calls GCC uh, to, to generate the object file while it analyzes the project. 
We also need to improve the tooling because we don't uh, do any uh, interfacing with security dashboards. So many, so they will probably show that the system is vulnerable, vulnerable to something. Ever, even through it's not because it uh, may detect we the the, 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 pro, the program is running an old version of the library. Uh, the same thing applies with Zyper PS because it shows which uh, pro processes are running uh, old versions of the library. But since we are we did we, we live patched the, 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 the program, it should not be uh, vulnerable to that uh, problem anymore. Uh, we also are planning to uh, we, we are in process of expanding the live patching support. So other libraries, uh, so the ones used by SAP HANA, NUMA CTL, UT Linux, Lib2, LibX script. Libraries with a high number of CVS. So uh, there was a database of uh, CVS that were, the libraries that had a, had a high number of CVS. And those three have a high number of CVS. And supporting standard C++ libraries such as libstd C++. Uh, this one can be quite a challenge because of the, it because it have many headers that gets inlined very often. And that is it. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, please. Uh, the microphone is there. Uh, so I assume when you uh, uh, when you live patch, when you install a live patch, it's reloading the the memory from the library, and uh, and that's why you have the no ops. Is you're filling in some of that space with the new function, and then overriding the where where the function calls into. Yes. And that would be why um, a, 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 endless, a, a forever loop is not going to call the new function. Correct? Yes. Okay. So, so um, what happens when you run out of no-op space? Do you reclaim old functions on when you install live, uh, live patches on top of new live, pa live patches? So the libpoop has some history of what was there before it got installed. Uh -huh. So we keep track of a history of that. So if we, we revert a live patch, we try to, we actually revert to what was before there. Right, but if you install, say you've installed a live patch, and then you need to install a new live patch that patches the same function. You can't just replace that, that function that was there. So do you stack another one inside of the no-op, or do you overwrite the original function? No, so we, we overwrite the, the original function. Uh, that, that way, we, otherwise we will have a chain of, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, we I don't do that. Okay. Hi, could you comment a bit about the supportability of a package that has live patches applied? So with that, that usually you would be able to like check the RPM signature and see, you know, does it come from SUSE or does it come from a third party? Um, how does that work with, with user space live patches? Does the ULP tooling include any checks to verify that the, you know, dash live patches packages actually originated from SUSE as opposed to, you know, like some customer actually patching SUSE originated packages and then, you know, raising the question, is that still supported? So if the, uh, so, so if the ULP tool has some checks to actually check if the uh, live patch is coming from SUSE, uh, we don't check that if the the the, the patch came from like a, a, a third party, uh, it will install it. But uh, we don't provide such packages. The, pro the, the 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 package we provide are coming from SUSE. So if you didn't uh, like, if you didn't add some other repositories, uh, this is not possible to to happen. Not sure if I answered your question. Uh, partially. So, so you're saying it's possible for them to install that? Obviously, you know, if the, the signature gets accepted by the customer, but if they did that, assuming they managed that, 
do we as SUSE have an opportunity to recognize that? Like it was showing us, you know, like this library was, uh, you know, had one um, patch applied, but I didn't spot any information that actually, you know, I had any kind of security information um, related to that, whether that actually got a um, SUSE signature. Yeah, so we don't check any signatures, but we have a ways to, well, well, we the live patch has the comment section that it can like link to a CVE or something or, or things like that, but we don't uh, check any signature uh, if it's coming from Suzy or not. Yeah, to comment on that, uh, it's basically the same as uh, you need to look back at the files where the live patch is coming from. From there, you can see which RPM provided that file, and from there, you can see if it actually came from SUSE or not, uh, which is basically the same as any other binary that is installed on the system. If, if you install a random RPM, you have that random binary, and if you then start that one, you have a process, and basically the question is now to see in the supported system, is that process coming from a binary coming from SUSE? Uh, and in this case, the restated question is, does that process have a live patch that is coming from SUSE? And the answer to that is always going back to the files that are on the file system, basically. And, and there's, as far as I know, no automatism to do that for running processes with or without live patches, and therefore, live patches is not worse or better than unlive patched processes. Perhaps we should add support config on the to the list of the tools that should interact with LibPulp. That when you when 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 some customers report problems, uh, that you have the mm, ULP tool output which which shows which processes were live patched, which is probably currently missing. Can you open a feature request? <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned one important part a little bit on the side note, that was the LD preload that is needed for the application to apply the live patches. And you mentioned SAP HANA. The LD preload for the application is the biggest problem I currently see because you need to have this before you start the application. So even if you have applied the live patch for a library, it might be happening that you have an application running that is not using it. Have you thought about a solution for that? Yes, so here is the thing. I'm trying to find the, the, the slides. So we now have this lip. So now we have the lip upload default package, which uh, do exactly what you are saying. It uh, loads lip up into every application. So you don't need to actually do the LD preload uh, manually anymore. And what we do is actually the inverse. If you want to disable live patching, you, are, you, you, you then have to act. So we have this already in SP4? Uh, well, the package, I, uh, yeah, it, it's, it is in SP4, yes, yes. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, only a short note about uh, identification of the libraries. Uh, Currently, we have uh, already built IDs in all li libraries and executables. So when we have a running uh, process or core from that, we can uh, get uh, all the built IDs from the core and identify all the libraries that were, uh, were involved in. If it is possible, like with uh, regular uh, libraries, even if uh, with live patches, so we can uh, then identify uh, an exact version of, uh, of used library. So it's possible from a running process or from a running uh, from core get exact version of the packages that is involved in. Okay. I just a note. Uh, Markus Meissner said that the uh, previously mentioned feature is not yet shipped. Probably the uh, like specifically disabling the. Uh, Loading by default. Yeah. And, uh, well, if I can, there is a one more question from the YouTube. Uh, the question is if the operating system has some hardening configuration done, which improve its security, will the patches keep the current security level, or do we have to make the hardening again after the live patching? 
So it, default, uh, it restores whatever configuration it was before. Uh, the, this hardening thing is what is preventing us from patching processes such as uh, Pulse Audio. Uh, we are trying to resolve that. We, uh, I have think, uh, I have, I am thinking in a, a, a way of doing that by using some uh, crazy things with Ptrace. But depending on your hardening options, uh, the process cannot be live patchable. Uh, One more note, not really a question. I was curious about the 4% slowdown of Deep Xiang, uh, so I benchmarked it as you were talking, just that one, just one run on uh, Zen 4 CPU, and there was no slowdown whatsoever. So it's sort of, you know, I mean, Zen 4 is, of course, has, has bigger instruction, uh, you know, cache for decoded instructions and everything, but, but it really depends, and, and I assume that the impact is going to be even smaller than this graph suggests. Okay. Uh, one question. In the event where a CV fix would require several functions to be uh, patched, uh, and it is important that they are all patched at the same time, uh, and you can mix the different versions, uh, does your tool handle that situation? Uh, can you repeat your question, but slowly, please? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's say you, you have a CV uh, fix which requires uh, fixing not one function, but several functions. And it is important that uh, the new version of all functions are applied at the same time. Uh, so you, you can't mix an old function and a new function. Uh, does your tool support this situation? Well, so if uh, we cannot guarantee, well, well uh, if it can't be mixed, uh, then most likely the issue cannot be live, uh, the, the problem cannot be live patch. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so, okay. But that, that's not what he's asking about. That's kind of what I'm asking. Uh, can, do you stop the, the process and yeah, you yes. patch everything and then you run the process again, in which case you are safe? Yeah, so what we do is on live patching, we stop the processes, we apply uh, the, the, the redirection thing to our, uh, to our function, to, to, the, to the necessary functions, and then we, we, we restore the process execution. But, uh, well, uh, yes, we, we stop the process, then patch everything, and then we con that it continues. So theoretically, this situation is taken care of, except that it isn't, because it might be so that one of the two functions is already on the call stack of the running process. Mm -hmm. The second fu function is not on the call stack. So when you continue the, the, the process, then the new version of the second function is already called, but the but the old version of the first function is still, let's say, in, in context. Um, and if there is, for some reason, some tight coupling between both old functions and both new functions, uh, then this will break. I can at least imagine one could be forcefully creating a test case that breaks in this situation. And if that's the case, then you need to write your live patch in a way that it takes care of this situation. For instance, by actually let's say, implementing a global flag, now I'm in the new universe and in the new function, in the two new functions of life, but you actually have to check if, if I'm in a consistent state, if not, call the old versions anyway. Um, so for some cases, you need to actually invest brain power into creating the life patch. It's then not just uh, automatic, the automatic extractor will, will not be able to see any of these kinds of problems, which is why it always will remain a manual process to create live patches. Um, is there a debug info for the live patch? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
So you mentioned it's possible for, uh, for some functions that will be repeating and, and it's possible that it won't apply the patch, of course, because it's still inside of that function. Um, uh, so it, it, essentially it's not being applied until it calls back into that function. Is it possible right now to detect if your, if your program, for example, is still inside the old function? Um, and and, and you're, you've applied the live patch, but you're not actually using the live patch? Yeah, so if we, we, at some point we had this kind of, uh, um, we had this kind of, uh, what was this called? Well, the kernel, the kernel guys uh, do this uh, every time. But at some point we had this, and eventually we, we, we drop it, uh, it, so, it will be. It, it will. It will run. It will apply the live patch, and it will still r run the old function until it returns. So that's what happened. And we don't know if it's in, if it's in the new function or the old. Function. Yeah. Well, you could attach uh, a debugger and look it, but not okay. at, automatically. I know we could look at, but the customer doesn't have an easy way. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't. Yes. So I wanted to say that in kernel, we actually are able to check the stack if which function is on the stack, but it's because uh, we actually have a tool that makes sure that the stack is always reliable. Uh, so that actually we always are able to track back all functions that were called. And actually, uh, it's not always the case, like uh, compiler usually gen generate the code correctly, but when there is some custom assembly, then it might do some tricks on the stack and it's not always like uh, clear. It's not always like uh, if you know the address where you are, then it's not always that, for example, uh, if you are like in, in the prolog of the function, then, then you don't know if, uh, if you are going to use the new function or if it's too late or you will stay in the old one or I don't know. If, if this uh, you mean if we try to apply a patch and you we find ourselves that it's in the middle of that knob thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I, so I, in I, this case... But anyway, there, I, there are definitely cases where, where actually uh, the stack is not reliable. And like in kernel, we are able to detect this. Uh, and another problem is uh, that actually What's easier in kernel is that on, on the br bridge, when, when the process is in user space, then we know that the kernel is not using anything. So we could basically switch the process. So we know. But in user space, we basically could not guarantee if the stack is. Yeah, so basically what you do is, uh, well, if the, if, the, if the thread or if the process is on user space, then certainly it's not in kernel. So you can do whatever you need, you need to, to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. But I uh, just need to uh, block the, uh, make sure that the process is not running so that it couldn't go in the meantime when we are applying, like switching it so that it couldn't run like race to start using some functions when we are actually switching it. But uh, what I wanted to say, and actually the original version of that uh, Lipalp uh, did that it uh, counted, it was really had to be preloaded and it counted entrants and returns from the functions, but uh, it was really slow as far as I remember. So this is why it was removed and uh, there is no the tracking of if the function is live patch or not, and if it's actually possible to migrate it with some guarantees that no functions, live patch function is currently in use. So actually, if we apply the patch, then it will start using consistently just the new functions. 
So I, I don't know. Maybe I made bigger mess than. Can, can you can you summarize what what what, what do you you you're trying to say here? <laughs> yeah, I, I I wanted to say that in kernel uh, we know what is used because we know when the stack is reliable or not, and when it's reliable, then we know all the functions that are actually being used at the moment. But okay. uh, we can do this uh, for random user space applications because they might do some tricks yeah. with on stack and it's not guaranteed that actually the stack, we don't know when the stack is reliable and when it's not. And so the, as far as I remember that the original a uh, solution for this for user space was that uh, libalp had to be preloaded and it basically counted uh, for each process if it entered uh, the function or not or when it returned. So there was a counter how many times it entered the function and how many times it returned. And so that it was able to actually uh, apply uh, the live patch consistently, so it had to v it uh, basically switch to the new code only when the process has had this, all these counters on zero. So it was not using any live patch uh, function at the moment. So, but uh, counting it required preloading it uh, since the beginning, since when the application started and also this counting was pretty slow so it had non-trivial performance problems so this was basically this counting was removed and we are not able to okay okay well, we don't have this counting anymore uh, on Lipop. Uh, this, this thing that he was saying uh, was dropped from Lipop before I, I joined the project. So I'm not entirely sure uh, uh, if it could be, be managed to, to, to work or why it was dropped at some point, but okay. I could tell you, but uh, first the other thing uh, with backtraces. So if, if, if as Peter already said it, it comes down to forming a backtrace to see if a function is already currently activated or not. Uh, and as Peter also said, backtraces are unreliable. Not super unreliable, but we can't give any guarantees about it, which means that as a tool for user inspection for customers or for support tools that basically can give you the answer you know, there's this live patch is applied, it attaches function so and so, but function so and so is already still is still activated and therefore the live patch is not active yet for something like this it's reliable enough the backtraces uh, it would just not be usable internally as a consistency tool for the live patching infrastructure uh, but as a hinting tool it's it's completely fine to use uh, it was dropped because it doesn't work the counting mechanism uh, we need we needed to create f stack frames out of nowhere which interacts with threat cancellation in a, in a way that the threat cancellation doesn't work anymore, which is, which is a problem for like mm. one or two <laughs> processes. But there we are. <laughs> Could you please bring up the last slide again? The last slide. Yeah, so th there was a, some GCC flag mentioned uh, patchable function entry 1614, and I wonder if you could explain where those numbers come from, yes. in particular if these are, you know, signifying the knobs for a prologue and epilogue, then I would assume that as we add new architectures, that those numbers would probably need to vary across architectures, right? Yeah, so uh, the 16 is the total number of knobs, 14 is the number of knobs that are emitted before the symbol is like uh, uh, emitted by GCC. Take the next slide. Yeah, so. 16 knobs and 14 of them are in front of the function. Okay. Yeah. So if the, the architecture changes, this probably will need to be 
uh, another number of uh, knobs to be limited because uh, they have may have a, a, a different number. The jump instruction book could be uh, of different size. Different size, yeah. So, so what's your idea for that? So, would you then take like the maximum of all architectures that we need to support, or would you introduce like an RPM macro to then fill in, you know, that GCC flag? The second option. Okay. There uh, a attack vector for malware or something that is aware of lip pulp, so it can sneak in his own function call. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of, of course, it's an obvious live patching can also be used for live patching in malware, right? Um, so that. That is inherent in the in the approach. Um, there needs to be other infrastructure that prevents this. For instance, because when we preload everything, then the yeah. So the thing is, any yeah, yeah. The, the the thing is, you need to communicate with the lip pulp in the in the target process, right? And we do that by via p trace. Uh, from the outside to the target process. And you can only p-trace certain processes, which are exactly those that you can also debug. And if you are able to debug a target process, then you are already controlling that process anyway, which means that adding nice infrastructure, which the pulp provides to create live patches, is not any adding anything. Uh, it is when you are able to p-trace a process, you control it. and. Uh, adding nice controlling knobs <laughs> doesn't change that picture. So that, that's how we prevent and not prevent uh, malware getting in. Uh, and that it actually is not malware that the live patch is providing, it needs to be uh, ensured by the delivery mechanism, like super checking signatures on the RPM providing the live patch. So yeah, related to this slide, uh, I would like to know out of my curiosity, uh, if it is possible to um, live patch twice the same function, obviously using two different patches, and uh, how it works eventually? Uh, do you work on the jump code? You substitute maybe the, only the jump code, or do you add the knobs also in the live patch hidden somewhere? So if we live patch uh, uh, one function, so so let's say you you live patch uh, a function multiple times. What we do is we create a there is a history of what was there uh, in, uh, on 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 lip that is stored in lipup.so. So when we revert a live patch, uh, we return to what was there before. So we can, therefore we can, uh, in this way we can uh, uh, revert to live patches. Uh, so you revert and then reapply the new one? Yeah, so we can, re we, we actually don't need to uh, revert the, 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 the live patch because it stores the, the, the history. So if, we so if we stack two live patches, um, uh, what happens is that, uh, so if we start to choose, um, what happens is that, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? <laughs> I'm a little confused. Yeah, it was about uh, adding same uh, patching again and again again uh, the same function. Okay, so how it works behind the scenes? I mean, I was thinking of the jump code and also of the knobs, and I was thinking that you were changing only the jump code, or maybe you were adding the knobs behind the scenes. I would say uh, in inside the live patch uh, or any other option. I, I don't. Yeah. Know. So we store what was there. Uh, on lip poop. Uh, so if we need to revert uh, the, the, the new life patch, uh, it will revert to what was there before. Uh, but in this case, we will simply 
uh, replace with uh, what was there with a new jump instruction to redirect to, a, to this new function. Any other question? How many live patches did we deliver to customers already by now? Uh, so far, one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 